Okay, we are recording. Get it into speaker. Okay. I'll do gallery view here. All right, ladies. So I am excited to share all this with you. Um, to get a little background, because I don't want anyone to, I don't want to just talk about things that you already know or have been trained on or anything like that. And since it's a small, intimate, small, intimate group, I feel like we can definitely kind of feed off of that and be able to really address y'all's needs. So usually what I start on whenever I'm doing Instagram trainings, I will help people with their content. So how you write a post, hashtags, that kind of stuff. Do you all feel stellar on that or do you need more direction on it? Direction would be good. Direction, okay, awesome. And don't be ashamed to chime in. If, if you have a question, I guarantee you that tons of other people do too. So never feel ashamed by that. Okay, the way that I always start, oh, and let me grab, there's one more book that I wanna grab. Hold on one second. Okay, whenever I set up a post, you always, I wish I had my phone. I mean, I'll have to grab that in a second too. Anytime I set up a post, I will always start it with a tagline. Okay. That's always the most important thing. It needs to be something that catches people's attention, something that's interesting to them. And oftentimes what I will also do. So how do you know, it's kind of interesting to your, because I think one of the biggest things I see people do is they make a post and they start the headline based off of what they think their people need. But that's why if you watch my story stuff like that, now some polls I just do for logarithm, but sometimes I'll do polls because I'll ask people like, what do you need help with? Or what is it that you're struggling with? Or a conversation that I'm having with somebody and I know that they are, um, they're experiencing something. So I will actually think about the person that I'm talking to, like your avatar, y'all been trained on avatars. Okay. All right. Awesome. So let me explain that to you too. Your avatar is kind of like your ideal customer, your ideal, um, your, your ideal person that you want to help. Okay. So you always want to talk to pain points. So especially like in the coaching world, in the health and wellness world, um, a good pain point would be, you know, if it's true to you, um, I, you know, it was another situation where I couldn't stop eating, or, you know, if you're talking like a binge eating situation, that's a pain point for people, or it was literally the 10th diet I've tried in the last five years or whatever that truth is. So it's a tagline because it hits a pain point and an emotion and it makes them want to read more. So those first two lines of a post, you always want to make sure that it's, it's very intriguing. Now, sometimes I will put out posts that are like, okay, if you go onto my Instagram, probably one of mine that had really good interaction and it was because it was a super big, like it was, it was a, a pain point and it was very kind of controversial. Like I shared about a time in my life that was really difficult. And I was just completely blatant about it in my headline. So this is also the time that if you feel comfortable with it, and once you do, that's when you'll start like really connecting with people, share with them something that's very vulnerable. And then that's what you want that tagline to really kind of hit home on. Okay. So that's always kind of where you get your pain points. So you need to be, you know, thinking about your pain points with people um, and health and wellness. You know, those are typical ones, self-confidence. Um, don't ever, I do not believe always follow, you know, Gina's instruction, but I don't ever believe in leading with the product because that's not a pain point for anybody. That's not, that doesn't elicit any kind of emotion for anybody. So I always lead with a pain point. Okay. And then within the body, I still tell a very short story about myself right? So this is the relating to somebody. So like whenever you're messaging somebody, you usually want to say like, oh my gosh, I hear you. I used to think that way, or you're relating to them. And that's what you're doing with the rest of that. You're kind of explaining the tagline, 
taking them through a very short caption of your journey. And then you talk about that, you talk about the solution. Okay. So you have your tagline, you have your problem, and then you have the solution. Okay. And that is that's your body. Some tips on how to write it. People are not going to read a stacked paragraph. You need to break it up and also using the power of three. So I will, a lot of the times I will put on there, um, you know, it'll be, it'll be kind of like, it'll be kind of repetitive. Like I used to think this about myself. I used to think this about myself or that mean girl used to tell me this, like the mean girl in my mind would tell me this. And I would say it like three times over because it makes it super easy to read. People can not feel like they're having to dig out the information and it's powerful too, especially if you use the power of three of saying like the first one and then the second one that they're very similar and the third one pulls out some controversy. So that's how you can make it kind of intriguing and make them want to read more. And at the end of it, you have your solution. Now a hint as far as the logarithm goes, um, the research that I've shown, if you put link in bio or join now or something like that, it's going to be put on the logarithm as kind of spammy. So you always want your call to action at the bottom, but make it more personal. You know, if you're struggling with that, I feel you, I'm here for you. Um, I'm always an open book. You can reach out, you know, message, whatever, but I wouldn't say link in bio. Now, sometimes I do, because sometimes I know that somebody is watching me like a hawk and I know that I can help them. You know what I mean? And I'm not like looking to build a logarithm. I'm looking to literally help that one person. And then I might, you know what I mean? I might call, I might put a CTA on there, but as far as logarithm goes, I don't do a whole bunch of those because of that. Okay. Does that make sense? So always do it, but I would just avoid the, the verbiage there of join or link in bio. Um, how about pictures? How do y'all feel on like what you what to post and those kind of things? Okay, I see a comment here. Logarithm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so on pictures, do y'all go ahead? I mean, yourself and tell me like how do you feel about pictures? Like I'm posting pictures. Do you feel lost? Like what kind of pictures should I do? I think for me, it's varied in the last three months. So I actually didn't go back through and revamp my Instagram. Okay. What I did do was I took out the single shots of mm -hmm. me Yes. before. And that was the only thing that I took out. So all of the random stuff that I've got on there from 2012 or whenever it was that I started it, you kind of see the journey because that is a part of my story. Yeah. And that is yeah. where that testimony is coming from is mm -hmm. they've seen me kind of struggle through it. My social media is not there. I'm going through hard times. A lot of the personal people in my life are seeing that, mm -hmm. but I have found that the more that I'm going in a rhythm of quote, something inspirational, something food-like, and then a picture of my family. Mm -hmm. And then during my stories, I'm putting that a little bit more on me mm -hmm. a bit with it, but I'm finding that as long as I'm paying attention to the insights, it's giving me the feedback of kind of what people are liking to see and kind of where I'm not necessarily mm -hmm. getting that feedback. Yeah. Yeah, but it is, it's tough right now because there's, it, it's, there's like three different ways to make your photo effective in a stream feed in a live feed and then showing up in your personal friends feed so I have been finding that I I'm I'm having difficulty trying to narrow this down because I feel like I'm running in three like I just said in three different directions with my photos where I'm like three different audiences and I kind of want to bring it back together if that makes sense so your audience so the food, you said food workout, and what was your third one? And family. And family, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, so that's still the same audience though. 
that's still same audience. And it's good to have, it's good to have that variation there because that's what you, I mean, that's what you help people with is finding that balance and all those things. So I think that's all the same audience and that's really good. Um, so I don't think that's bad at all. Okay. I just wasn't sure if that was like something on where, cause it is like, I know that I'm hitting my post on like the mom stuff Mm -hmm. because that's, that's kind of where the company is sitting at for us is that this is a huge movement, especially for me being a mom of LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. I've got Asperger's and autism within the family. So there's a lot of movements that I'm I don't want to have just attached to it. Like this is my lifestyle. This isn't just something that I signed up onto and was like, Hey, I'm going to make money. Like this has been a life decision and a life choice. Mm -hmm. But, and again, like you were just saying, like, don't like, it's kind of hard to not put in link in bio or fitness and stay directly on that train. And it's, Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of like, I just want to make sure that like having these different narratives in my head is not like too much clutter in your I opinion. Say more now. Yeah. I would say that definitely do those, keep those posts aligned with, with that. Okay. But whenever you thread in, so your stories are really good for that, uh, for the kind of threading and more of whatever you kind of want, keep it to that. Okay. But I would say one of those kind of extra niches that make you who you are in all of those other categories, focus in and hone in on one of those. Okay. And then that's where you can also use the hashtags to be, to be connecting with people and bringing people that are specifically looking for that. Cause I know, and I'll go ahead and segue now to hashtags. I know that like the lot that's, it's moving in a different direction with hashtags and that, you know, some people are saying, don't use them at all. Well, I don't agree with that because people are still searching, still looking at a hashtag and still finding me in hashtags. Yeah. So Yes, the hashtag, like putting 28 down, whereas like they used to say that you don't get tagged for that. I haven't seen anyone say that you're getting like knocked for it, but I will say that my personal experience is that once I stopped doing that, I saw a little bit of a boost again, which I mean, the logarithm changes all the time. And that's, you know, you can have lulls and stuff for various reasons, but I wouldn't say to do 28, but still use those because people are still finding them, but use them authentically. Um, I used to do a lot more of, copy and pasting them. Like I'd have six or seven different sets because they were still working really well that way. And now it's very much more towards very niche down. And then I go in there and I actually interact with those. Okay. So then more people are coming back to my, to my uh, page who are also using those. So it's almost um, like self looping then <laughs> with hashtags. It's almost what? Like self looping, but with hashtags. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. So okay. as far as putting 20 of them down there to boost your interaction, no, I don't believe that that's a good thing anymore. Okay. And I know that it is now, whenever you actually go in there and search, you can just literally search. They're moving, Instagram is moving more towards being like a Google search or a search engine where it isn't just based off of a hashtag. Like so so that dialogue just, is coming in now in the yeah. stories. So, and that's why it is important. And that's why I say like the very big, the caption in your page needs to have the, um, it needs to have actual Google search words that people are searching for or that they're going in there. And one way you can find those is, and this is Instagram, probably less so, but they're moving this. I really believe they're moving this way. If you go into Google search and you kind of start to ask like how to, lose weight or how and Google search kind of strings that out for you. Yeah. Those are what you call those. So those are long, um, long keyword searches. And if you can find those kind of extra words at the end and start using those to kind of more highly target people. Uh, that's uh, okay. I've yeah. been trying to figure out what the apps and the generators and stuff. And I actually got my 15 year old to <laughs> Yeah. Enlighten me on the algorithms because they got me. I, I didn't know the algorithms, especially for like TikTok. Um, yeah. And so I t- don't, I can't, <laughs> it's like, you know, on TikTok. No, and I'm not. I, TikTok I'm, doesn't interest me though. Like I can't, I've tried to jump on that and I'm just like, oh, it God. does. I'm using it just to, call, I'm using it just as a humor buffer and yeah. I'm posting it to my stories in Instagram. And then it goes to mm-hmm. my Facebook page after, yeah. but I'm just doing one of them a day where I'm like, oh, this is actually kind of funny. Ha ha. Yeah. I guess I'm cool. 
watching TikTok guys. <laughs> for watching. sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I was doing them for a while and TikTok does kind of grow a little bit easier, I think, because I've never done anything on TikTok. I'm just post the stuff <laughs> and it still oh grows goodness. some. So it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to do. It's just not, it's not what I've been focusing on at all. No. Um, alt. Okay. Alt. Um, the alt text. Do y'all know about that? You go in whenever you post a story, let me pause this and grab my phone really fast. So I make sure that I'm telling you exactly how to do this. Correct. Hold on one second. Okay. I'm just not sure if I, I'm pretty sure I remember, I haven't memorized how to do it, but oh, okay, if you go down there and you know, you hit your plus sign up here to do a post. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing on accident. Add the add sign. And then whenever you go to your post, so this is, I'm not gonna, I've already posted this picture. You go to next and then you go to next. And then when it comes down to where you're gonna do your caption, I will do, um, you go down to tagging people is always good. This is a little bit of a side note. Tagging people is always good. And adding your location is always good too. Now I don't add my actual location because I don't want people to pinpoint where I'm at. Like just for creeper factor. Um, I, the closest I get is the town that's kind of a bigger town. I live out in the middle of nowhere though. Um, so tagging film America is not gonna bring anyone to me. Literally, I can, like there's a potential of 900 people in this like town and not all of them are on Instagram. <laughs> so, doesn't help me anyhow. But I will tag things like Norman and stuff like that. Like I own real estate in Norman and I know a lot of people in Norman, that kind of stuff. So I will tag like that town up there. Um, but if you go down, so you're, here's like where you'd put your caption and then that's where you would tag people. If it's appropriate, don't spam tag people. I will annoy people. Uh, that used to be an old tactic. Add location, you can add a location. And then if you go down here to advanced settings, right there at the very bottom, click on that little bad boy. And it will have down here at the very bottom accessibility. And then it says, write alt text. Now this is for, what this does is it puts words kind of hidden in your post. And the reason why this was brought up is for people who are visually impaired, they can still kind of search and interact and see what the picture's about and those kind of things. And now this is gaining, I guess it's gaining more speed. It's actually been on Instagram for a really long time. Like I've known for at least a year, but I think now it's gaining more speed. So I've actually been using it and I have noticed a boost in my, in my uh, posts whenever I remember to do them. You have to do it at the time of it. You can't go back and edit it really. Um, but I'd put in there. So this is like, like you would write literally about what the picture is about. So, um, you know, mother with child and grandmother, because that's a picture of me, my mom and my son. Um, and then you could put in there, you know, whatever the, the story is about. So I mean, that would be like on Mother's Day or something like that. Like that wasn't, I just posted that because like on Mother's Day, I'm not working. I'm just posting something up. So then people, you know, they see something about me whenever they come to my page. It wasn't a post that I was trying to do anything with. And, um, and then that will also help. So what we were just talking about with having the keywords and those type of things, that's also going to help build on the logarithm. Okay. Um, speaking specifically about a logarithm, whenever you post, so see, I have a few comments on my last one that I need to reply to. Every time somebody comments, you want to comment right away because that is giving you kind of points. That's telling Instagram that this is a post that people are interacting with and therefore they want to be a part of it. Now I will not heart their likes yet. So, you know, you can like heart it and like it. What I will do is right after I post, I go to my previous comments and that's when I heart it. Because here's the thing that is super cool. Whenever you heart something, they get a notification. So you are literally giving them a, hey, come back here. And they'll be more likely to, to like or comment on your next picture. So that's not in a logarithm thing. That is a literal, like you're bringing organic traffic to you because you know, when you pop on here and it gives you all those notifications of everything that's happening in the world on your, um, uh, on your Instagram, when you, you first come in there, it shows you all the notifications that will be in there. So-and-so liked your comment. 
And then that way you have another way of saying, hey, see me. But whenever you comment back to them, it doesn't give a notification like that, or at least it didn't last I checked. Um, so that's important for just building interaction, but that is part of the logarithm because the more people come back and interact, the more it gets fed. Okay. Now, when we're talking just pure interactions, and I've been so bad about doing this here lately, um, but when I was doing reels, I mean, I was growing a lot faster. I just have not been doing them. Reels, are y'all doing reels? They're pretty hot right now. Like you can definitely, you can go viral pretty easy doing them. I shouldn't say pretty easy, but you but you should be doing reels way more often than I have been here lately. Um, I have been focused. I've not been focused too much on growing. I've been focused more on just kind of nurturing. Um, but that is important for um, like anything, anything new that Instagram puts on for you or like you see a new a new feature or something like that. Instagram rewards people who are using their new features. So that means that your stuff's going to be fed out more. Reels are pretty new still. I, I've seen a I've seen a drop personally in that they're not like going quite as viral as they were. Um, like I was having like 70,000 hits and that kind of stuff, I think on some of them. Um, another thing for building or again, so I'm just like, kind of, is this okay? I'm just kind of like splurting out where what's kind of coming to me. Okay. I just want to make sure it's helpful because I'm kind of all over the place. I'm like, oh, also this, also this. Um, whenever you do a live story, okay. I know Gina's done lives, right? You've done lives, live stories. You have not yet. Oh, my sister, you need to come into the, you need to come into the live world. So lives, whenever you actually do them, they don't, they don't tend to get too many views, but the thing about them that are super cool is one, people get to see you one-on-one -on -one and they're like, okay. You know what I mean? Like you can, like, if I'm watching somebody live, I just feel like I know that they're really and truthfully, they're not as filtered. You know what I mean? Like you could trust them more. And that's the biggest thing that you're trying to do right now is build that no like trust factor. And no matter what you are trying to build on Instagram, that's what you're wanting to do. And when you do a live, you're real, you're raw. And people, people feel like they can, because you can, you can judge somebody not in a like judgy judging way, but you could feel somebody out is what I mean, whenever they go live. And if somebody's confident enough to be real and raw with you and be, you know what I mean? They're going to be more trusting with, with being a part of your team or, you know, joining you on a journey or buying something from you or whatever it is that you're, that you're, that you're um, talking about. So going live is important. You should do it very consistently. I do not do it every day at 5 p.m. And I should, <laughs> but I always, I usually do try to do uh, like a 5 p.m. just because that works for me. That's probably not the best time to go live, but I work full time in a clinic. So I can't do it. Like it's, you know, it's better than nothing. What you do want to do is like, she was talking about insights. You can go into insights and you can go. So I just clicked insights, it's the middle button on your page. And then you can go to your audience and put see all in there. And then if you go down there, it shows just like their age range and their gender. And then it shows most active times there at the very bottom. You technically want to be posting and you want to be, um, so like mine are always 12 and 3 p.m. I feel like it's been that way forever. Those are when my most, my people are most active. And the reason that that's important, because if you put up a post or you start a live video or whatever it is, they're more likely to go to your page because that's the time that they typically go. People are pretty methodic in their uses on things. So that's following that can help also like, and definitely if I post like in the middle of the night or something like that, it doesn't usually do near as well. Um, but sometimes I do it for consistency. Whenever you, after you post, you should share it to your stories. Do y'all know how to do that? I know Gina does. Okay, so y'all know how to share the stories yet. Just the arrow button, share it there. Put like a tap here or something like that and make it kind of intriguing so then people actually go to the post. Um, a simple tip. If you do, I always try to do, so that that's what's called a carousel where you swipe and you see all the pictures there. That's a carousel. Um, those are good because the more somebody stays looking at your post, if you ever noticed that you will, like, especially on Facebook, I feel like Facebook is really about those too. So this applies for Facebook. 
You won't even like somebody's stuff and they're still popping up on your stuff all the time. But I guarantee you, you're looking at it. You are paused on their screen, right? That's why they're, you're, they're still popping up in your feed because they may not know that you're creeping them, but, in, but Instagram knows you're creeping them. So it's going to keep on feeding you that. So that's why if I post a carousel and people spend more time because they're swiping all of the pictures, Instagram saying, I know that you're watching this one. I know that this is the one you're looking at. So they're going to start feeding it, whether you like it or heart it or whatever you do and don't. Um, so carousels are always good. I always try to do those. Um, that's also why video is super important and really good to do because if it's an intriguing topic, then people are going to stay on it for longer. And then that is Instagram saying, hey, this person keeps people on the, on the um, app longer. They keep them on the app longer. I can send them more ads. If I have more time to send them ads. I make more money. So that's why Instagram, you know what I mean? That's why like getting people to be on your Instagram and staying there is important. Okay. There's, oh, okay. One cool thing that is brand new. One of these I haven't even done yet. I just, I just heard somebody else talking about this and I haven't actually done it myself yet even. But on, okay. Have you all seen that you can do captions now in your stories? Are you doing stories? Awesome. Okay, good. On your stories, you can now go in there and do captions. Have y'all seen that? I'm gonna put up a story here. Okay. So if I just record you all right now, and then I go up to the, where the gift thing is, the little, little face that deal bopper, click on that. Now this might be something it's, it's new. So if you don't have it yet, you might not be rolled out with it yet. Um, but if you scroll down to, where's it at? Where's it at? There it is. I miss it. It's up the top. It says CC blue captions. Do you have that there? It may not be rolled out to everyone yet. Sometimes some people get some things and others don't. But it should be on your gifts. GIFs. I think they're GIFs. Don't see it there. Do you see it, Gina? Is yours there? I actually don't have it, but Chad does. I don't know why. It, it's like an update. My phone updates slower. Yeah. But I know what you're talking about. Yeah. For the longest time, I didn't have music, like for the longest time. I was like, I hit 10K and I still didn't have music. I was like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but yeah, do the captions and it will transcribe the audio. And then it will, um, it will put the captions there. Captions are important because not everyone is going to um, have their music on. They're at work. They're laying in bed and their spouse is next to them, something like that. And they're not going to be listening, but if they can read you, then you can still get your message across to them. Okay. So do start using those. Now, the other part of this, that I was telling you that I didn't even know about this and I may have to play around with it for a minute and find it with y'all. And don't worry, I'm not going to do that whole candid video. I'm not posting that anywhere. I will warn y'all if I'm going to do a video. Um, if you go into settings and I just, I just heard this and I should have looked into it more, but I was actually like literally driving home whenever I heard it. Um, let's try to find it here. If we go into settings and then there's somewhere in IG TV settings where apparently you can turn on your captions in there too. And that is a game changer right there but I'm not sure where it's at yet. But I haven't actually played, I just, I just overheard somebody talking about it and I was like, oh really? Invite your activity, business. I'd have to play with it some, but I think there is somewhere in here where you can put in your IG for your um, IG story or yeah, like your videos. 
and do on your live stories and do captions. So I've heard. Now that's something I will message y'all if I figure out exactly how to do it. Like I'll message Gina, you can share it out. Cause I'm going to try to figure it out myself. But be on the look for it, look out for it. And if y'all notice one, let me know. I didn't know you could do that. But that'd be a game changer too, because that'd be people would watch your stories more or your uh, videos like that. Um, okay, Jill, know that you want to do as many polls as possible and that little real bopper de deal because the more people use stuff on your stories, the more it's going to boost your logarithm and the more people are going to watch. And I don't know if I finished this thought whenever I told you that whenever you do a live, it shoots you to the front of the stories. Did you ever notice that? So that's why doing lives is also important because if somebody's live, then if you go home and like all these stories right here, if you go live, you're going to be right here whenever they get on there and they'll see you and they'll be more likely to go to you. So that's also why doing lives is important because you're just building that interaction more. Hey, Boo Bear. I am making a bubble bath. Oh my gosh, you are. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did you pause it? No, I don't know when I, maybe I didn't put the recording back. Um, but okay. I think that's kind of a lot. There was something else we talked about hashtags. Um, the good way to find hashtags. Okay, so if you don't know how hashtags kind of work, I will give you a little bit. I don't have my direct notes. I haven't done this in a long time because I I you I was I've been saving them and then reusing them. But the way there is um there's an app called Flick, and in my training I give you much better description of this but if you go in there on so the way that hashtags work is that you want to find a way to rank in them so don't use maybe throw it in every now and then if you feel pretty confident i'll post i'll boost mine up some but the way that you want to use hashtags is if they're high competition mainly meaning there's a lot of different things in that but if it's high competition like if it's in like a 1.2 million or something like that you're probably not going to rank too high on that because there, there might there's probably a lot of people who do have really big accounts using those. So you're not going to be pushed as high on that one. So that's why it is good to use hashtags that are 500 might be too low. I try to avoid those range, but you know I try to stay within the 1,000 to maybe like 15,000 somewhere in there. Um, and then I'll throw in some 20s and 30s and and 100. Like I usually don't go up much higher than about 125k. Like people who are following that hashtag are using it. But whenever you know what I'm talking about, whenever you do a hashtag, it'll tell you like how many are there. And the reason on that is because you have a much higher chance of uh, performing well on that hashtag. If you perform well on the hashtag, then that's when you're going to get fed more on it. Lauren, I have a question. Yeah. Um, what, where do you even start to create a hashtag? You know, like where do you, what kind of hashtags do you use or create? So what I will do is, and I'll go to Flick. Let me see here. I'm going to be kind of, um, I don't know if I can get into my account because I'm, so bad with passwords, <laughs> like so bad. Oh, but you know, I have my phone. Hold on a second. Oh, I have my phone. I'll split my phone. So Flick is where I find most of my hashtags. And it is because they have a little bit of science to their madness. And I do have a whole training and it takes like, it's, you don't necessarily have to do all of that. But you can get very like in depth with how you pick them. What I do though, is so if you go into flick that's the app that i use you can go in here and let's say like boy mom i'm just gonna put in boy mom it will tell me low competition medium competition and high competition i will never use a high competition one because i'm an account with 12k i'm not an account with you know 5.6 million right so I'm going to stay within the low. I'm going to do some mediums and it will feed you different ones within that group. Now, I probably wouldn't just do boy mom. You want to be a little bit more. People aren't really searching for that. 
You know what I mean? Like, I wonder, I wonder if there's someone else in the, in the world who's a boy mom. Well, obviously, you know what I mean? So I do use boy mom, like you'll see it on there, but um, that's not something that people are really searching for. So I do use that and I do, but I usually do, I'll do something like nurse practitioner, like other people might be searching for other nurse practitioners. Other DNPs might be searching for more DNPs. So those hashtags I will use. Something that makes it where people would actually reach out to me um, or be looking for, like, what is it? Like, what hashtags do you search for? Do you actually look, do you use Instagram in that way? You may not, because I don't really myself, but a lot of people do. Do you use Instagram that way where you're searching out things that you want to find? So then I would use those kind of hashtags and I would put them into Flick. Are we on Flick still? Yes, we are. I would put them into Flick and I would see what else they recommended. And if it was a high competition one, I wouldn't use it. There is a way to be very, very like, but I, I don't really think that we need to go into that necessarily. And most of the time I've kind of quit doing that myself. Like I just, but that's how it works. And that's why you want to use the right hashtags because it makes a difference on your actual posts um, as far as like competition, those kind of things. Let's see here. And I told you all about the captions and even I don't know how to do that yet, but I said, I, just, I ever heard somebody say that. I said, ah, interesting to know. Um, I feel like we could do like a whole nother, I feel like we could do a whole nother, um, another training on like what what you do like in stories like what to talk about and that kind of stuff you know what I mean like I feel like we could probably do something we could probably go into that more too what other questions y'all have though um what are some example polls to do in stories okay so some of them I'm doing for pure like okay I did horrible today I just posted my first story and they would have ran out if I didn't do that. Like, I don't usually wait that long, but I know it's Mother's Day and I was just like, right. And then Mondays are always crazy in the office. So this one, I just put on there, like, can you juggle? And I just asked people like, can you juggle? Yes or no. So something that, that was just a really general one for just building interaction. But if you post something that elicits emotion with people, those are the ones that are going to do the best. So like, um, but I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be probably totally blatant about, um, you know, do you struggle with, don't, don't call people out on their problems. Exactly. Like, don't say like, do you struggle with emotional eating? Like me as you could, and I have done that. And that's not a bad thing to do because then that opens up the introduction to talk. So I guess it depends on, let me back up for a minute. If you are looking for building your logarithm, I wouldn't do something that was touchy and personal because more people are not going to want to admit their faults or their problems to someone else. If you are literally looking for that one person to help, to start a conversation with them in the DMs, then do something like that. Does that make sense? Um, if we are doing something, I'm trying to think of something that, Something like, okay, like quirky things that annoy you about, you know, can you not like, does gums like, you know, you're talking about a story, like you're just, it's just a building relationship one. You're not trying to sell anything or anything like that. You just, you know, say, oh my gosh, that person was smacking their gums and it drove me crazy. Are you also annoyed by gum smacking? Like that's a trigger for a lot of people. You know what I mean? A lot of people are like, yes, like they want to, they want to voice their opinion on that. You know what I'm saying? So that's a good one for building logarithm in that people are wanting to tap on your tap on your poll and it's non-threatening. You know what I mean? Like they're not going to be, if I message, if I did that, she might message me about, you know, wanting to help me on that. You know what I'm saying? So depending on it depends on what your what your goal is on those. Um, but for those, for building logarithm, that would be for hitting that logarithm system. Um, viewing other people's stories is good because y'all know that you can see who views your stories, right? Are you on a professional account? Business account, I mean? Okay. So I, there are different trains of thoughts on that. A business account doesn't grow quite as fast 
as a personal account from what I've heard. I've switched to personal account before and then I kind of switched back. I was like, you know, honestly, I don't really care. Like it wasn't, you can't see who views your stuff. But if you're on a, you can click down, if you're in a business, you can click your stories and see everybody who is watching your story or who has seen it. And then that way you can respond back to them. I don't know if you're on a personal account, if you do a poll that tells you who reacted to your poll, because I've been business since, like I said, I switched it over one time for a minute and I don't, I don't remember. I, I switched it back and didn't, didn't ever go back to personal, but the business ones, you can see everyone who's viewing your stories. And that's when you can start getting in the DMs, non-threatening, don't spam them with your product or anything like that. Start building a relationship with them and then start learning their pain points. And then you talk directly to those pain points. And they're like, oh my gosh, she gets me. She gets me, right? And that's how that conversation came up easier. So I kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but did I answer that question for you? Yeah, I think it's good that you kind of brought up a few benefits of doing that too, because we, mm-hmm. we get a lot of advice that's like, do this, do that, do this, so that. And it's like, why am I doing this? <laughs> and then you know, right? the reason why I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's something I feel like, I feel like for the longest time, I just posted because post consistently every single day. And, you know, and I was just doing it because you had to do it. And, but what was I getting out of that? Like there's a purpose in, and I'm still, you know, I'm not saying that I do this perfectly by any means. Um, And I've been in transition. So I'm kind of like just going with the flow right now, but um, you need to have a reason for your post, right? Otherwise it's, it's no matter if it's on stories or if it's, if it's your actual post, there needs to be a purpose behind that and going, you know, taking them down that journey in some way, because otherwise why do it? How do y'all feel about let me ask you, is there any other questions that you'll have? What do you think is the the biggest struggle for people when they are off social media and then they are new to social media? Because you and I have been on it for a while that Mm -hmm. it's almost like second nature. Like Mm -hmm. when you just mentioned the thing about this account and personal account and not seeing people, I didn't even know know that because I've been on business for so long. Yeah. Um, Like with your girls, what do you feel like is like the main thing that people are like, oh, you know, almost like that aha moment. The aha moment for? Something that's like social news, like social media for like coaching and business wise. Like what's a question, reoccurring question that you might get? For coaching somebody like to start their business or why? The, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding. For your social media, mm-hmm. when you're, when you first start coaching, you essentially, your social media wasn't used for social media. Like you didn't really have that intent and you weren't organizing and pre-planning your posts and whatnot. So now that you're, going into it as a new coach, what are some reoccurring questions you feel like you get? On how to post just in general? Yeah, just like very general. Um, Probably what to post, right? I feel like most people are like, I just don't know what to post or what to talk about. Yeah. Or whenever I first came on stories, I was like, what do I even talk about? Like, I don't, you know, so That's you true. need to have some kind of consistency and you need to have some purpose. And I think once you understand your purpose, you start to recognize what you need to kind of talk about and share about and those kind of things. Part of that is being in the DMs. Part of that, part of that is asking yourself before your post, like, what is my overall mission? And is this alignment with it? And how do I want that person to feel? I feel like that's been a big shift for me or was a big shift to me is how do I want that person to feel? So I would literally think of, and most of the time that's like empowering them or it's making them, you know, motivating them. Um, 
whatever it is that you want to do for them, relating with them, how do you want them to feel? And then think about it from that point of view on what it is that you kind of share and talk about. So I usually have, I'm usually sharing, which like I said, I haven't been, <laughs> I haven't been super great on Instagram here lately, but um, I want to share something about my day-to-day -day life. That's just like, so they see like kind of what's going on. And then I want to share something that's inspiring to me. So um, something that I've learned or especially like a personal development, um, something that gives me value is probably going to give them value also. And then always talking to the pain points Like, what pain point do you want to, I would say whenever I was at my best, what I was doing was I had a calendar and I would write on there, like what, like I, I had a list. Hey, cutie. Oh, how precious. Oh, so cute. <laughs> I had on there a list. So let me get down to my, if I can't find it. So, so here is like my day-to-day, -day, right? And I would put on there like my pain point that I want to talk about. And then I would talk to a pain point every day and alternate between business building and then um, fitness part of it. So it alternate every week and be talking about that. And also have your post, you want optimally your post to match your stories. Because once you get them intrigued in a story in your post or you know the other way around, whichever the one they found you in first, they're gonna want more about that. So to make sure those kind of match each other. So it's not like they're intrigued and then they're kind of let down. They're like, oh, I want to hear more about that, you know? So you always want your audience to either feel empowered, inspired, or smarter. So I would say pick an emotion that you want them to feel. What is your pain point that you want to take them through on that? And make sure it's always make sure it's always giving value to them. So either empowering them, entertaining them, or educating them. So I'd say always make sure and just go through and um, and you know what is it that empowered you? Because technically your avatar is kind of like you, like that's, that's most of the reason why people are going to join you or not is it's because they relate to you. Like I remember Gina and I, like whenever we, uh, she first signed up and everything, she said, well, I joined you because I felt like we could actually be friends in person. Like if I met you in person, I feel like we would have connected, you know, because I was sharing like who I was, what I was doing. And that's how the biggest thing that you're selling. So you're not actually selling your products. What you're doing is you're selling your people on you. And then you're showing them that, hey, I got there because of this. Does that make sense? You're really connecting with people. Like that's really your main goal is connecting with them. It's not displaying the products, it's displaying the result of the products. The happiness, the fitness, the confidence. Yes, those things, the time freedom with your kiddo, you know, <laughs> it's totally fine. You're selling yourself. And then the products are how they get to the point of, of releasing those pain points. I know everyone can think of that differently, but that's. Can I chime in for a quick sec? Yeah. Absolutely. I just, I, I recently found something that was kind of intriguing and I talked to my husband about it. Um, but at the beginning of this, I did up like my first video and I was like, Hey, here's my Shakeology in the beach body. I'm super excited to get stoked on this. And I did up a few posts of me with the products and kind of following along with the, the media training with that. And then I stopped and then I started posting again. And then I stopped because I just literally was sick of taking pictures with the blue copy in my hand and but I'm finding out that people are actually going are you still using you know what you were kind of using before mm -hmm. um, but what I'm having an issue with is transitioning into um when they like when they ask and I'm like oh yeah like I definitely still am 
Um, I haven't necessarily upgraded in using just more than what was given at the beginning of the start of the journey with the company. Um, and that's kind of where I'm deteriorating. Like, I'm getting a lot of pushback of, well, if it was there, I'm finding the exact same product at the, su the supplement store. Mm -hmm. or I'm doing this or like, they're trying to feed that information of like what that key ingredient is <laughs> out of mm -hmm. what I'm using. And I'm like, so I've done the go on to Beachbody, like take a look, you guys can check out the ingredients. It's totally all there for you in like hard or black and white. You know, if you guys are interested in it, I mean, literally, and then go Google it if you guys are really that interested in breaking it down, like ingredient by ingredient. But I'm getting you're a lot getting of those kinds of questions. Then yeah, I would, and that so is, that is where, let me ask you this first. D is that something that you are, are, you are totally sold on it, that this is better than, this is better than what you get in the store? Oh my goodness, by far. I've literally okay. spent 15 years and that's a part of so, my story. Like that's what I'm confused about is that they know this, like the people that I'm kind of talking to and that are questioning me with it, they know that I've tried slim fast shake that like isogenics okay. like and you're sharing that, that on your stories and your posts it's starting to come out a little bit more on the posts with it and that's kind of where i'm starting to see that pushback that's um, where you get your posts from so those objections that you get that's where your posts go to okay you so know? is it yeah so is it better for me to because that's the thing like if i'm not being consistent with it is it better for me to be maybe once a week putting a post up with a chickal or like with a product or should I just kind of I still wouldn't away say away? I still wouldn't say post the product and follow Jean on this I want you know I mean follow Jean on this okay but what I what I would do is stress Oshawanga helps us stress I would post about a post that I've done before was um I'm probably not consider I'm better at wording stuff and I'm I've got where I've gotten I'm, I'm better I'm gonna send you on that you just hit my brain with that I'll go through the ingredients check out what it is what it benefits and then make that my point for the day throughout it yes but what you want to do is so yeah much more. yeah <laughs> if what you, yeah, you want to do though is start with something that's a tagline not oh my gosh I love this product start with a tagline of you know my husband looked at me and said sarcastically oh looks like it's going to be another great day and I initially wanted to just like go off on him and be upset that you don't understand the stress I'm under you understand that I'm working you know so many hours and I'm sleeping two hours and I'm breastfeeding a child because that's whatever that was what was happening during that time and instead I stopped and I thought about it and I was like you know what this isn't really a great way to start our life and I knew something had to change and that's whenever solution, so there's problem solution. I mean, I didn't word that poetically. I would word it more poetic in a post. That's whenever I found out that food really is medicine and that that can help me. And that's and that's where I would talk in. So I kind of lead with that. And in the story, I talk about Ashwanga and I talk about how like I really, you know, like those kind of things. And maybe I would talk about it in, in my stories, but it wouldn't be, I wouldn't do like a, I wouldn't always do, sometimes I do, but I wouldn't always do like a post on like holding my shake type of thing. And I definitely wouldn't do that very often because even if you don't have a product label there, people don't want to be sold to. That makes sense. That, that actually helped? very good, very much so. Thank you. I've been, it's yeah. kind of been bumping around in my brain a little bit with these algorithms and stuff and yeah, I, it's it seems like so much and but don't once you get once you get um with the flow of things though it won't be yeah it's just I am a sporadic brain and that's kind of the thing is that I think I overthink and then I'm definitely on that feel side of like if I was reading this post what would I feel and then I get too involved of like how I want to share it and then I'm like my English teacher said that it was an issue for me even before and I've worked on it all my life. <laughs> so I relate to that a lot. Yeah, trust me. It's, it's been a <laughs> great me. learning experience in the last three months of how to kind of like a hypnosis of my word vomit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so on that note, though, um, Miss Gina, it is eight o'clock. I got to take off to the kiddos. I do too, yeah. Yeah, well, thank you so There's much, Lauren. I found that really informative. So much. We would love to.